Hey guys, welcome to the Tech Point Africa podcast. My name is Emmanuel. I'm Tim Gosbury. And uh, yes. Roman Poirot de Vigo. <laughs> yes, so, and also joining us today online, we're having Kel Kelvin. Kelvin, can you say hi? Okay, yeah. yeah, so, yeah, thank you very much, Kevin, and thank you very much, Romain. Yeah, Romain is the CEO of Quick Delivery, and Kelvin is the CEO of Bumper. So, today, we're going to be talking about shopping, shopping, and shopping online. So, if you like shopping, if you like window shopping, and if you like buying anything online, especially then... those you can't afford. Yeah, especially <laughs> those things you can't afford, yes. Now is the perfect time to talk to the people making magic behind the scenes in e-commerce in nigeria i mean there's a whole lot of things to talk about yeah so yeah and uh i'd like to get what you guys think about uh e-commerce so yeah romain can we start with you sure uh thank you very much for the invitation and uh, hi kelvin it's good to talk to you and with you um so uh, i mean e-commerce is only the beginning in nigeria this is the beginning of the story, right? Uh, everything has to still be, uh, I mean, invented. Uh, um, hundreds of Nigerian entrepreneurs are creating uh, the, the real Nigerian experience or African experience for e-commerce, which cannot be the same, I look at my face, <laughs> cannot be the same as, uh, as the European or the, Af or the American or the Japanese uh, e-commerce experience. There are uh, local specificities, local requirements, local preferences, and all this uh, requires uh, a specific IT infrastructure and logistic infrastructure uh, that is going to be uh, to, to give satisfaction to the Nigerian or to the African consumer. Mm. And it's a work in progress, obviously. Awesome. So, uh, Kelvin, wh what are your thoughts? Where do you think e-commerce is at right now in Nigeria? I think it's in a great place. Um, we, we're, we're just at the phase where uh, um, e-commerce is shifting um, from the hands of corporations to the hands of um, business owners. And we're seeing business owners have a lot more power than they have ever had, um, a lot more control over you know, what they sell, how they sell, and when, you know, where they choose to sell. Um, that kind of control has never necessarily been you know, in, the power of the, in the hands of the, the the merchants um, in the past, um, but now you know they have this entire control. They have tools, you know, that you know Bumper is building, or Quick is building, or other players are building. That immediately, you know, they have their products you know, available to millions of people out there. Um, they can choose, you know, now, you know, and and manage everything from, you know, as even their mobile phone. So I think I think you must just, you know, it's just the one for e-commerce right now. Hmm. So in, in recent years, was, we're even seeing e-commerce move to niching down to what we call social commerce and uh, mobile commerce. And last week, we saw the announcement that Bopa was integrating with Instagram. And so the main headline was turning people's DMs into a storefront. Can you tell us what that means exactly, the philosophy behind that? small business owners is that will help them manage um, their sales no matter where they sell. That's what we do at Bumper. Um, and in doing that, we noticed that out of about 50,000 orders that were recorded on Bumper last year, um, 20,000 of those were actually from Instagram and WhatsApp. Yes, and basically that told us, you know, that showed us where um, the market is headed. And so we, we were here, you know, building out things but, but the market is saying something different. The market is saying, you know what, the customers are saying, this is where I'm comfortable shopping. You know, I would rather speak with you. Before I make a call. You know, you know, like, you know, the process that someone puts in place. It is what uh, is called consumer behavior, yes? Um, and so we, we saw that and noticed that, you know, a, a lot of DMs, a lot of, a lot of sales is happening in DMs of this, of these merchants, you know, and the question was, how do we automate that? How do we ensure that they have all the tools needed to be able to sell better in their DMs? And so, what we basically did is to integrate directly with Instagram, such that um, the, the merchants now see their DMs directly on their bumper app. Yes, yeah, so they can. Send them in. Um, what is, you know, the question is, why? Why, why do you have to do that? I already have bumper there. Yeah. Um, 
customers right there now on the chat. So we have something called click action buttons where you can send product directly, you know, record your sale, um, you know, request for payment, organize the data. So right now, when the merchant is speaking to someone, they have all their all the data about that that particular person chatting with them, you know, and they'll be responding like they are just on Instagram. The, the customer would be receiving this message like they're on Instagram, but they're actually on, on Bumper, you know. So that is going to help them, you know, because there's so much um, cover details that are, are now left just on Instagram um, without being very useful to, to the merchant. Now, they, they capture it on Bumper, they can use that to either optimize their ads or or just you know understand how their business is doing in those those sales, sales channels. Um, and so yes, so that, that's, that's what that was about, you know, um, and the, I think my chance really loved it, you know, based on what we've seen so far um, in terms of people adopting the, the, the tool. Hmm. Uh, I think if I may, I think what Kelvin just said is very important. Uh, what uh, what uh, Bumper is doing and what we, Quick is doing with uh, Quick, yeah. Quick Store that we launched uh, yeah, recently, launched, launched something recently similar, yeah. uh, goes, uh, I mean, in, into the same spirit. On one hand, we are empowering the merchants, the sellers, uh, millions of them in Lego Salon who uh, have products and they know how to sell them, but they need they need some backup, they need some uh, some back office to to help them. Uh, streamline their their operations and automate their sales as well as much as possible. And on the other side, from the consumer side, which I think is uh, as important uh, as well as Kelvin said, uh, this is social social media is where most uh, Nigerians are comfortable shopping, and this boils down, in my uh, opinion, as a newcomer to to Nigeria, to the issue of trust. And uh, if you look at uh, existing. Uh, uh, legacy uh, e-commerce players such as uh, Jumia and Conga, of course, they've did, they've did an, uh, they did an amazing job uh, laying out the first, uh, the first base, going to the first base of e-commerce. But uh, the issue of trust is a big issue for, uh, for, for, for merchants and also mostly for consumers because uh, sometimes while well, you shop something and uh, you buy something and it's not what you receive. And you need to, you, as a consumer, you want to feel comfortable with uh, the reseller and you want to understand that you can reach out to somebody real if there is an issue. Yes. And uh, it's perfectly understandable. Uh, 15 years ago when uh, France, uh, or 20 years ago when France started to uh, adopt e-commerce, uh, the government passed a law for called the law for the trust on eco on, of online shopping. Mm. And it was, uh, it was uh, indispensable to create uh, the environment, uh, the framework for consumers to feel safe online, buying online. And this is a process perfectly natural uh, through which uh, um, all economies are, are going through. And uh, companies, uh, tech companies uh, have a foremost uh, uh, prominent role to play. And that's what we are trying to do uh, with many other uh, startup uh, founders uh, and, and teams in, uh, in Lagos. Mm. Awesome. Yeah, you have to. Okay, so uh, one of the issues, until you came today, I didn't know that you actually had Quick Store. So yeah, we're still a bit quiet about it. Yeah. Mm. So logistics is an issue. Um, everyone complains about logistics. I think apart from fintech startups, yeah. logistics startups get the most flack from yeah. consumers. Yeah, yeah, of course. So it's either your your package does arrive when it should arrive, yeah. or it arrives in worse condition than you expected, yes. or there's just always one problem, almost always. So. How has it been? You've been in the logistics space for quite a bit. So yes. how has that experience been? Well, um, uh, we've started quick because of those uh, challenges, okay? Because we want to contribute uh, in solving them. And uh, I think we've been fairly successful uh, uh, because, uh, I mean, we have uh, around 300,000 customers right now. They are all merchants, okay? okay? Uh, I mean, 99% are merchants. And we have uh, over 4,000 uh, riders signed up uh, from bikes, I mean bikes, but also trucks and vans and SUVs. Uh, so uh, I think the uh, key approach is to ensure that, first of all, you select your partners, delivery partners very carefully, and you empower them by giving them training uh, and tools. 
and that's what we've been doing. And uh, of course, we always, I mean, life is full of uh, obstacles, of course. Yeah, yeah. surprises. And, uh, the, 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 the key thing is to overcome them and to, and to learn uh, from what you do. Uh, so uh, we spend a lot of time uh, uh, empowering the riders. Next Sunday, we have uh, uh, one of our regular town hall meetings with all the riders from Quick. Uh, going together and we, we 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 give them a meal and we hear the grievance and, and we give them some uh, perspective on the future etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, and so by empowering them uh, you give them some visibility and some uh, some outlook in life the the f biggest earner on the quick platform uh, last year made 3.2 million naira take home okay so which is interesting a huge amount yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And he's, I think he's 50, uh, he's over 50, and he's a very resilient guy, and he's not the only one. So if you keep your rider happy, they will do a better job. That's the bottom line. Then uh, you have some uh, environmental uh, factors that you need to take into account. Um, in order to keep track of your riders and of the, the quality and to maintain the quality of the delivery process, you need to be able to track them uh, and to geolocate them. Okay, yeah. so if the data network in uh, in the city or in the country is not good or not good enough or not or too expensive, uh, riders are not uh, easily locate um, loca 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 Yeah, it's yeah. difficult to locate them. Yeah. yeah. Okay, either because the network will not allow them to be tracked because uh, there are some faults in the network, or because the uh, network is too expensive and they will turn off the data. Uh, because they try to save money and uh, we all try to save money these days because mm -hmm. life is so expensive right yeah. so um uh, if you um if you create a, um, a reliable data network and affordable data, ne data network and uh, i mean the telecom companies are have already started doing that but uh, i feel that they could uh, they could do even better uh well you create a digital market mm. and data becomes a uh, uh, cease to be a hindrance and it becomes a convenience, mm. so to speak. Um, so uh, we are in constant dialogue with uh, telecom companies to see how we can foster uh, a, a broad digital market for Nigeria uh, by making data more affordable and more reliable. And of course, it's a work in progress, uh, but I feel it's very important. If the US is such a, a, a groundwork, um, a, a playground for innovation, is because data is very cheap and you can access it uh, everywhere. Yeah. Awesome. So I think before we'll come back to uh, Kelvin, we're going to pay a little homage to the people paying our house rent. So yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Abisala Adenoga, the head of business at TechPoint Africa. Did you know that you could present yourself as a reputable brand leader? Did you know that your business can get the limelight it deserves? Now you do. Using TechPoint Africa's marketing tools, we can put you in the faces of a large audience for brand awareness and thought leadership. To do this, reach out to us by sending an email to business at techpoint.africa or click on the link in the description below. Hey guys, welcome back and uh, I hope you enjoyed the message from our sponsors. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, Kelvin, thank you for staying with us. And uh, I'd like to know, you've been basically trying to build what we in the media called uh, Shopify for Africa. I don't know if we're right on the money with that, but I think now you can clarify if we are wrong about that. But what are the challenges in building something like that from the onset? platform that we're looking at and um, when we actually start thinking about this um was Shopify and that's because Shopify has been able to um build a a, a commerce platform for 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 their merchants you know and scale and scale that so there's definitely a lot to learn um from from Shopify. But you know, as Ashwin said earlier, you know, they have to be even before the, the conversation, you know, they have to be this local touch. You have to think about um, what the, the consumers in this part of the world are actually saying um, and how the market is here, you know. And in doing so is where we actually start thinking about, you know, even just this integration. This this integration we've done with Meta now um, has actually not been done like this, you know, anywhere else. You know, even Shopify did not did not build this, you know. 
as care, the business owners care. Um, we have good engagements with them, and we can understand, you know, where where um, they are having the most inefficiencies or difficulties. Um, concerning the other question, the other part of the question, um, talking about the, the challenges, um, there's they, they definitely there's definitely. basically working more with um, partners. Um, so we're not, instead of trying to do everything, um, our work is basically to help connect everything. Um, how, how do we ensure that you know, we, can, we can connect you from, from, from your payments um, to, to logistics, to, um, to the bookkeeping, invoicing, everything, to the marketplaces where we sell, um, to credit, everything is just connected um, and seamless for you. So that's, that's how we, we are thinking about it. And so that's one way that we basically um, try to ensure that we're not, um, you know, we, we can't overcome some of these challenges. Um, I think another thing would be um, the, I would say, um, the market generally. Um, when, when, when we started building this, we definitely knew that um, we we're not entirely building from for the entire small business owners. Um, because there's there's still a large chunk of business owners that are still largely being entirely offline. Um, they don't necessarily have as much access. Um, and the idea was how do we start building these stages? You know, starting from the the lowest hanging fruits. You know, um, the people that would immediately start by adopting the solution. We because we actually tried. You know, we actually tried and we discovered that um, it would take some time. Let me give you an example. So, for instance, um, you know, just painting two scenarios. When we when we meet with an Instagram merchant and say, "Oh yeah, yeah join Bomba," and you have all this, immediately they are able to set up, you know, do everything by themselves. You know, get a website, push it out there, and even make a sale. You know, they get their wow website almost immediately. Um, and when we went offline merchant and we say, "Oh, you get all these same things," you know, it's it's a lot difficult. It's a lot difficult. Um, because for them, they don't necessarily have any community that they can basically push their product to in that, that website. So, so giving them a website was not necessarily, you know, they don't necessarily need it. You know, so what we're instead thinking about is, which is something we have to solve first before we go back to them, is how do we ensure that, you know, when they put their products up, you know, we can actually help them push their products to, to their customer. Because it's that it does the, the look that they, the, that's the gap that um, has actually not been fixed largely. So either by helping them run better ads, you know, optimize based on the data that we have about their business and, and their customers, um, or even just connecting their products, you know, to other marketplaces. You know, something simple things like that, you know, just so that their products can have very good visibility. So one of the things that we're doing now is that we're integrating with Google My Business, Google Shopping. Yeah, so it means that immediately you you click that button on your connected apps. There's, there's something called connected apps, and that's how uh, merchants can connect with different solutions they use. When you click on con um, Google My Business, it just tells you to open it, and immediately all your products on Bumper become available on Google My Business. You know, so when people search for products on Google, um, search to buy something you know, on their map or even shop shopping, they will get to see your products on their website. So visibility, things, things like that, you know, it, it seems very simple, um, but those are the kind of things that we can now do, you know, to help those, these offline businesses because they don't have the, the community that you'll be able to push. Like you can just say, oh, I'll give you a website and that's it. You know, there has to be something more. Um, so yes, and, and it's also a good thing that we have a lot of people building in this space. Um, and that's because there's now so much education you know, happening in this space. You know, we're now seeing even offline businesses you know, beginning to, you know, they are now a little bit comfortable. This we are basically writing on the work that you know people like Jimmy Ajiji, um, Conga, or even Tate that sort of wave have done over the past years, you know, because before now, you know, if you tell anybody to buy something online, they would be like, What? You know, now we're seeing the adoption is now, you know, it's it's growing rapidly, you know, and you know, at at this rate it will probably um being one of the biggest markets for, for online purchases in the next five years. Mm. So you're talking about a big market. What's the relationship so far between uh, an e-commerce platform and 
fulfillment. So I know there's shopping and making things easy on one hand, making payments easy on one hand, making integrations seamless. But how's that conversation been? I thank God. Uh, thankfully, <laughs> Romain is here. And you, but let's start with you. The relationship between e-commerce and fulfillment so far so good. Are there? Uh, they are inseparable. <laughs> They are, they are inseparable, you know, and I'm sure that's even why, you know, um, um, Romain and, and the Inquirer quick team decided to, you know, start building out, you know, stuff and that stuff because you realize that, you know, they are physically inseparable. Um, you will definitely need to figure that out, you know, at some point. Um, for now, what we do is that we allow more chance to figure it out themselves. Um, and that, and that, that means that, you know, we, when we speak to most of them, they sort of have logistics, they have their logistics guys, or they use JIG, and or they use this, or they use quick, you know. And one of the things that we are, we are, we are going to do, which I started talking with um, Romain, Romain called the, the start of the, the podcast, was that um, we need to also find a way to have quick on board, you know, such that business owners can be able to select quick as a delivery um, partner and, and they're able to deliver products, you know. Um, seamlessly, you know, without them thinking about oh, copying the data here, I'm wasting it there, you know, because we already have that data, we can push it to shoot down to to quick, and you know, for the merchants, it's just seamless. We're not thinking about anything. Um, so yes, so first is that it's inseparable. If you're buying anything online, it means that definitely that product has to come in, you know, one way or the other. And there's a lot of work, and I'm sure Romain would, would speak more about this. There's a lot of work in managing, you know, the entire operations of of logistics, especially in a country like this where the infrastructure is not, you know, it's, it's not there, it's not standard enough. Um, but yes, um, we are now looking at working with partners like Quick, you know, um, and other partners to ensure that um, might have choice, might have the choice to select their partners, um, but are also able to seamlessly, you know, integrate their, their choice partners um, when, whenever they need. Okay, Romain? No, I do totally agree with Kelvin's uh, view. Uh, uh, the seamless uh, integration is the key to uh, customer satisfaction. Mm -hmm. This is how you. Uh, this is how you generate uh, uh, profit. Uh, this is how you avoid uh, unnecessary uh, cost and delays. Delays means cost now uh, in the logistic logistic space, and this is how you uh, you grow the pie for everybody. So uh, we uh, our policy is to integrate. Uh, uh, with uh, all players in the market, we consider that we don't have competitors; we have competitors. Okay, mm. <laughs> um, because in the logistics space, you speak, and in the fulfillment space, you everybody collaborates with everybody. Mm -hmm. So that's very important. Uh, and the, already, the market in Nigeria for e-commerce is organizing itself. Jumia uh, understood that. Uh, uh, to be better at fulfilling and uh, and delivering, they need to open to third parties as well. Uh, we were the first uh, uh, African uh, delivery uh, platform to uh, integrate with uh, all the big e-commerce solutions such as Shopify, uh, uh, WooCommerce, PrestaShop, and Magento. So if you have a Magento uh, store or e-commerce or a PrestaShop store, you can select uh, Quick as a delivery partner. We did that two years ago. Uh, and uh, the market is going to continue to structure itself and, uh, and uh, the fulfillment uh, uh, part uh, will not escape that. And uh, you will have a lot, I mean, you have so much real retail real estate, real estate in, um, in Lagos or in Nigeria. Uh, the, the really good ones are the ones that are well operated. They're going to specialize and they're going to, uh, to attract uh, e-commerce uh, merchants or social vendors uh, that will locate their inventory as close as possible to their big markets. Because uh, if you're a merchant and you trust the fulfillment center and the prices are affordable, there is no reason why you should keep your inventory close to you. You, you want your inventory to be as close as possible to your to uh, the end user to the consumer yeah uh, and uh, uh, this is a part of what we are developing as well we want to create tools to for merchants to locate the the fulfillment center that will be uh, uh, the, the closest to, to their need or to their customers need and we want to empower our landlords uh, to uh, so that every um, available space is a full fulfillment space 
Mm. Okay, as long as it meets a, a number of criteria, of course, in terms of safety, etc. And so everybody is going to integrate with everybody, and uh, and the best ones are going to uh, emerge, and that's that's the way it should be, I think. Okay, so addressing is one of the biggest issues for logistics or e-commerce um, services in Nigeria. So um, they are not adequate. Um, addressing services in the country so uh, it's not so bad you know uh, quick uh, to dead I mean delivers uh, I mean we have offices in Lagos and uh, Abuja okay. we're opening offices in Ibadan uh, this month okay uh, but we deliver all the way to Kano okay, okay. Uh, with tr- not with bikes obviously but uh, with, bu- with trucks from Abuja we serve uh, six states around Abuja plus the federal capital territory and from uh, Lagos we serve uh, four states so um, what we see is that the addressing system uh, has considerably improved uh, over the past uh, four years since uh, I arrived in Nigeria, uh, not because of quick, but because of all the innovation that is done uh, locally, uh, and also because Google uh, invested a lot of money uh, yeah. in Google Map, and uh, it's too expensive. I, told, I <laughs> keep telling them. I think it's a real... Uh, Obstacle to the to progress of uh, African tech, the the fact that Google Map is crazy expensive for Africans is the same price for Africans and for Americans, mm. which doesn't make sense, right? So, um, but beyond that, we we observe that uh, addresses are becoming more and more reliable, and we have a very high success rate uh, in delivering. Uh, what you need to ensure before the delivery starts, and maybe Kelvin will have uh, a different opinion, but. Uh, uh, we, you need to ensure before the delivery is picked up that uh, the, the, consu- the, the customer is really will really be at the location that he says he yeah. will be at. Yeah. Oh. Because uh, how do you achieve that? Well, uh, we automate. Okay. Okay, but also we do a human intervention when uh, when required, uh, and uh, we educate the the riders. We teach the riders how to behave, how to prepare for the deli- for deliveries. Okay, so some of our riders do twenty deliveries a day. And they have a success rate of uh, maybe 99%, uh, some of them. Some of them uh, do uh, less, uh, or, and they can have a lower uh, efficiency uh, rate. But uh, you try to anticipate the problems and to make sure you have the right information. And so technology is very helpful to do that, obviously. Oh. Okay. So a lot of companies are tending to build um, embedded finance products. In yes, the, uh, so we do that too. Oh, okay. Tell us about that. Well, uh, the first uh, uh, financial services financial service that we embedded is cash collection, okay. obviously, because seventy percent of Nigerians don't have a bank account, as you know. Uh, and uh, um, if you are an e-commerce merchant, uh, collecting your payment uh, is very important on one hand, as we discussed before. And if you're a consumer, uh, making sure that you get value for your money is very important as well. Is the issue of trust again, and so we we started uh, the cash and delivery uh, um, collection a uh, year and a half ago, and uh, it's a wonderful tool because uh, now we collect cash for uh, uh, from restaurants who buy supplies of uh, staple food uh, from uh, people. I mean merchants in computer in computer village, uh, so it can it can it can. Uh, uh, it's changing the life of the merchant because he, he can uh, he knows he has insurance with us for the cash and for the product, and he knows that every uh, twelve hours or twenty four hours, depending, he will get his uh, his cash on his bank account. Okay. okay. So another se- financial service that we're looking at is uh, um, uh, lending, obviously, mm-hmm. not ourselves because it's not our, it's not our job. We're not a, a financial institution, but. Uh, it's uh, uh, connecting uh, financial institutions with merchants and also merchants between each other because uh, uh, if you, I mean, as you know better than me, you go, on, uh, you go in Yaba market, you go in uh, Oyingbo market, the merchants, they, they, they borrow from each other and they lend to each other. Mm-hmm. And uh, we want to bring this informal economy into mm-hmm. the formal economy. It's going to become more reliable, more institutionalized, more effective, and at the same time, uh, is going to empower a lot of people. Awesome. So P two P lending. Yeah, yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. So he uh, remain touched on something that maybe 
you might want to address Kevin. The whole what I ordered versus what I got. So yes. now that uh, merchants are finding it easy to integrate an e-commerce solution into their platform, they can sell very, very easily. The whole issue of trust in the e-commerce space. Is there anything, is there any way that uh, Bumper helps to uh, mitigate this? I know it can probably not be completely eradicated, but yeah. What I other versus what I got is terrible. <laughs> so yes, yes, it's, it's definitely something that we definitely see, um, like in in the, in the space that's um, just people maybe talking about it or ranting about it. Um, for us, we, we are not necessarily building for the end consumers. Um, we are building entirely for the oh, merchants. For the merchants, okay. And yes, and for the business owners. So. Our own work is to just, you know, help with, you know, their own verification and showing that um, they are using the um, a tool like um, that was built to 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 sell, you know, the right product. Um, but we are entirely focused on on the tech and for merchants, you know. So we're not, you know, we're not necessarily um, designed to, you know, um, work with the with the customers. So if you see something that the merchant is selling, I purchase it, you know, and you reach out to the merchants, you know, just like how you reach out to them um, normally. And the, the only thing that now they have um, tend to help them with referring their sales, um, websites, it's engaging their customers. They have all those tech because that's what we are, we are providing, but not necessarily the the end-to-end -end, um, system. So some of the things that we are looking at doing, you know, um, working with partners majorly um, is, is, you know, helping merchants be able to, you know, Put in escrow, you know, so con consumers sh should be able to pick um, companies or business owners that have escrow, you know, already, you know, integrated. You know, is th that that's now on the, the part of the post consumers, you know, the education, the educational part, like saying, oh, um, you know, how do I ensure that I, I I want to be sure that this is what I get, so I'm going to use a business owner that has the escrow already integrated, meaning that. I don't, my money does not get to the merchant unless I receive the product, you know, simple things like that. Or working with partners like delivery guys to ensure that, you know, um, you know, we don't release the phone until the delivery partner can say, oh, yes, I have actually delivered this thing to the customer. Um, then you release the funds, you know. So just having those systems in place are things that we can do, you know, with the help of um, partners um, to ensure that we're, we're helping some solve some of those um, issues. Uh, we, something we do with Quickstore as well, we I think is the right approach. We don't release the funds for 48 hours. Oh, uh, okay. And then the, the, the customer has a as a as a, a way to to uh, make a claim if he doesn't receive the product or if the product is not what he ordered. Okay, uh, and uh, it's very simple steps that uh, are helping foster trust because trust. The lack of trust, in my opinion, is not, is not just, uh, oh, uh, you're a crook and uh, I'm a victim. It can be just a misunderstanding or the inventory the, the inventory is not available. And uh, with inventory management like on Bumpa or on Quickstore, uh, the merchant can, can uh, track better what is his inventory level and he can, get, uh, he can receive a flag a message if the inventory is becoming too low uh, and he can anticipate. Uh, so that's a that's oh. a great way to to help trust. Awesome. So well, <laughs> thank you very much for that uh, insightful uh, comment, and also thank you very much, Kevin. And uh, yes, yeah. maybe some other questions I would have asked, but I just realized if I keep asking or Ching Wazin keeps asking, we will probably keep he <laughs> be here <laughs> till five p.m. So uh yeah this has been really really interesting and uh thank you guys so much for having us here today and for our listeners and viewers and uh, thank you so much for the support and yeah for watching to this point of the conversation and let us know what you think about e-commerce are there any stories you'd like to share with us that you think <laughs> this guy should hear so that's yeah i mean uh, both the merchants, if you're a merchant and you have a lot of headaches around your business or you're a delivery person or you're an end user, just let us hear what you think and yeah, we'll be happy to, <laughs> we're happy to send it to you guys, right? Hope you guys are willing to... I mean, uh, as we say in, uh, in my country, Rome has not, has not built itself in one day. Yes. And uh, 
I'm sure Kelvin can say the same, but uh, the, the tremendous progress that has been made in Nigeria yeah, uh, in definitely. the last years is, uh, is, uh, is amazing uh, and it's very inspiring. Oh. Awesome, awesome. So, yeah, that's uh, with that we come to the end of the show today. And uh, let let's know what you think. Uh, give us your comments. Who else do you want to see on this podcast? Uh, you can drop your your. So now it's not just Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Spotify, <laughs> Stitcher, everywhere. Now it's also Instagram. It's also TikTok. It's also YouTube, Twitter, anywhere else you are watching this or listening to this. So, okay. Um, I don't think I have any other, yeah, any other thing. Yeah. No, okay. All right. So see you guys at some other time. Uh, bye. Bye. Bye, Kevin. <laughs>